Hello guys, welcome back. Um, I'm excited to do this um, aircraft build for today. This is the Academy Kitten 148 Jolly Rogers uh, library scheme. So as a start off, um, I'm doing the cockpit build, and this is the regular uh, painting, putting on the seat belts of the initial cockpit and seats. And if you've noticed, uh, one of the techniques that I've been using, the conventional one, will be the uh, dry brushing. And of course using the very fine point of either a brush or just a toothpick. If you want your cockpit uh, detailing, paint detailing to be perfect, uh, as against mine right, right now, what I did only was paint this using the uh, fine fine brush points and uh, toothpick. You want a very detailed and realistic cockpit seat and uh, cockpit panel. Uh, I'd rather recommend that you buy a uh, photo etch or a decal and this would make your cockpit seat and panel a little more realistic. But if you have a if you have a budget constraint then uh, this will do in the meantime. This academy, uh, this particular academy kit, I noticed it's not as straightforward when it comes to the build. Although I like the instruction and the painting guide, uh, the, the parts that they designed uh, are somehow at times uh, uh, 
difficult. Difficult in the sense that you, you really have to take some effort to really understanding how these pieces join together. Uh, Would we'll this be able to be uh, supported by uh, just a regular uh, plastic glue, or you would have to use the uh, super glue? Uh, in all fairness, uh, the detail of this academy kit is uh, reasonably okay, but in, in most uh, regular manufacturers, detailing would come to, on the part of uh, buying aftermarkets. challenging part in this build, as, as always, would be the uh, sanding and filling in the gaps of the uh, ring root. And in this F4 fountain case, uh, it's the same as any other aircraft uh, scale model. You'd have to uh, fill in the gaps with either of these material. What I'm using right now is the plastic pity. Uh, very easy to use. It's acrylic, water-based. Uh, this is effective only if the gap is very very small now you either have two options one is uh, you can either use a stretch screw to fill that gap or um, use the uh, hoodie now in some cases worst case scenarios some modelers including myself I use the uh, uh, the super glue to, to fill the gap in most cases uh, after this is dried you can sand it now mind you sanding is going to be very very extensive uh, it's not as easy as sanding it and even it's not sanding in perhaps in an aircraft field could take you several hours or in fact even a whole day and this is to really perfect the uh, the uh, uh, joining together of two parts and uh, nothing not, and uh, two of these parts would not be visible uh, of course the after effect would be the uh, decrease in the panel line details which i would suggest uh, you would rescribe it back uh, using some scribing tools When you do sanding, the uh, remedy after this would be uh, to describe the lost panel line details. Uh, like I said, sanding would be too extensive that it'll erase enough panel line details on your model, so you have to describe it. And one tool that we use here is the uh, Dymo tape. This will serve as a, a guide or template sturdy enough to handle your scribing tool. 
uh, but it can only be used for uh, uh, once or twice. Uh, more than that would be uh, not ideal. Some have seen mine, some have don't, so you'd be lucky if you don't have one. Now, don't be afraid in removing seam lines in the canopy. All you need to do is just uh, use your friendly uh, hobby knife and uh, scrape it off. Uh, once you have scraped off the seam line, don't worry about the scratch marks or the, uh, the, the damage that's been done. It can be remedied by using some sanding uh, with specific grits. What I'm using is the Micro Mesh brand with specific grits from 3,500 up to 12,000 grit. And these should be fairly, uh, be good enough for your canopies to bring that, uh, that original uh, shiny, shimmering, and clear effect. Uh, provided also you use your regular uh, polishing uh, paste, either a car polish or a furniture polish, and, and that'll do the job. And if you notice, uh, prior to me masking the uh, canopies, uh, I always almost use this uh, brand uh, Alclad clear uh, glass clear canopy gel or liquid. And what I do with the canopies, plastic canopies, is I submerge this. Uh, and then have it dry out for uh, at least two hours and then uh, voila it comes out shiny now uh, this of course is after uh, removing some seed lines uh, in most cases uh, it depends on the manufacturers manufacturing kit. One of my Waterloo's, uh, I have to admit it, uh, aircraft builds would be the uh, um, masking and painting uh, of the canopies. Wow, it's really challenging for me. And I gotta salute all those uh, aircraft monitors out there that seem to have perfected the, uh, the art and science of it. Now, what I'm going to do in my future build is to try this uh, one particular technique that I'm thinking of is to go uh, mask and paint you know, one 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 uh, line after the other and i'll try to do that instead of masking it with the total canopy and uh, spray painting it at one one go that that i have to try uh, it's just a concept in mind but i would have to prove it in my next build probably they should uh, help me avoid you know, overlaps and paintings and uh, avoid this uh, screw up one personal technique I use this is really personal I don't know if any other model uses this I know some of you would laugh at it but I, I normally use cottons uh, in the cockpit prior for me prior for, for my canopies to be uh, uh, glued on using white glue of course uh, this is temporarily just as long as I can get the paint done on the canopy uh, uh, I insert the cottons to protect the uh, cockpit panel details that I previously painted. This is to protect it. Now, once the a canopy has been painted over, you can remove it 
and remove the cotton as well and then we can put it back. Now, applying decals is, is not as uh, hard as you may think. Uh, all you need to do is submerge it in the water and wait for it to, to release its agents and uh, enables you to slide it down from the, the paper down to the actual plastic surface. Uh, what I use also for uh, decals is a Microsoft, Microsoft solution. Uh, it's a setting solution two parts one is for it to be uh, applied on the surface and once the decal is there you apply the second one which helps the decal stick in uh, conform to the uh, figures grooves nooks and crannies of the surface so that is uh, the most basic uh, of, of some aircraft uh, and uh, armor models so they use that brand and don't forget that once you do the decals also to reduce the, the uh, constant moving uh, once it, you have fir firmly applied it on the surface is to damp to dry it with uh, a cotton bud or just a tissue or a cloth Lastly, while uh, the initial base paints have been applied and then the, the second phase would be the uh, pin washes and washes and tinting, uh, don't be afraid also to make some mistakes and uh, some excess uh, uh, pin washes going over to, from your panel lines. Uh, in this case, in this build, uh, I was able to discover that you have, you, you, know, you can utilize the post painting uh, aspect of it however the most critical of this is that you be very very careful As the uh, right uh, airbrush pressure is applied at the same time that you, you are, you've made sure that the uh, the millimeter point is, is as small, almost as, as small as it can get not as not to uh, really damage the uh, applied decals then go for it uh, you'd be able to cover now the, uh, the unwanted uh, smears of the uh, original 
paint wash or paint washes that uh, have uh, gone beyond this supposed dynamite. And this would make your build a little bit more uh, presentable again and, and clean. And perhaps uh, a little bit of uh, subtle weathering is uh, emphasized. Uh, from my previous build, I noticed that once my, the pin washes have been applied, uh, other surfaces that this doesn't have to be pin washed uh, either gets that uh, dark and uh, cranky black color, and I don't want that. It, it makes the model look too too weathered and dirty. Now, here comes now a solution that I learned from this build was uh, you can do some post painting afterwards, and perhaps even if you you know put a little bit of a uh, lighter shape to it and uh, go for it and it, it would emphasize the final line now if you don't want that two-tone uh, subtle toning then you can go for the original paint and don't have to put on the lighter shade of color Thanks for watching. Scale modeling is fun. Copyright 2020 at Ivan Terrible. I am not an expert but I love creating dioramas. See you on my next build.